Good evening. How are you? Brothers, I'm glad to see you today. And if there are any sisters out there, thank you for tuning in. But um, I just want to say that this is going to be a, the session is going to be basically on obedience down through history. And I have uh, named this series, it's the same song down through history, obedience. So, um, but first, before I get into anything, I'd just like to um, recommend a book to you. It's by uh, Dr. Miles Monroe. It's called The Power of Character in Leadership. Dynamite book. Um, it's a study. And by that, I mean it's a book that you just can't read once and put it down, or you just shoot through it. It's something that will enlighten your heart your mind, and educate you, and make you aware. It also will inspire you to be whoever you want to be and to critique your lifestyle, your behavior, uh, uh, for the better, for the better. Once again, it's the power of character and uh, leadership by Dr. Miles Monroe. By the way, I, uh, I originally ordered this one before it came out uh, from, uh, from the Bahamas. And when it did come out, uh, I, uh, um, I'm quite sure it hit the stores pretty rapidly. It's not only for leaders, but it's for those who have potential in leadership. And everyone has potential. Um, I had to purchase another book because this one kept taking, being misplaced here and there. And I found out, I, I caught the corporate, corporate, uh, the corporate by the way, uh, it was my wife. So I bought her a book. And I bought another one just in case. But the book is really dynamite. You need really need to get this book. Now, we're going to talk about here, um, you brothers. I want you to focus on down through the years. God, um, the message that he wanted the people to get was, I'm your king. Obey my laws and my statutes and my precepts. And um, everything will go well with you. Now, I'm going to read some things here. I'm going to read some from the Constitution. So if you have it, you can turn to Deuteronomy, the sixth chapter. And um, it's from the Old Testament, number part. Now, I want you to understand something. The Old Testament uh, shows God his character. God's character doesn't change. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. That's constitution. That's his word. God does not change his word. If he said he's going to bless you based upon a condition, he's going to do that. It's not like the laws that's happening now in this country of America, whereas they're changing the laws. And it's not for the people. It's for the betterment of for corporations. Uh, we can see that now. We can see what's happening. So now... Um, I want to read something for you, and I want you to get. I want you to see it from the perspective of where you live and where you are. Now, you brothers out there in Nigeria, in Ghana, in Pakistan, those who get my emails, and those of you who are on Facebook, you know, um, what I would like for you to do is tell those other brothers out there to send me their email. Email me, you know, at kingdomcitizens.org. And um, go to my website, and you'll see uh, um, my uh, um, uh, uh, email address, which is kingdomcitizen.org at gmail.com. And uh, send me your email, and I'll send them uh, information concerning what I write every week. Uh, I have several things I've written. My wife hasn't put it on uh, our website as of yet, but it's coming. It's coming. So I want you to get those brothers, those using Nigeria, Ghana, Ghana, uh, Pakistan, um, and, and some of the, the, the others uh, locations over there. Just send me your email, and I'll be more than glad to, uh, when I send it out uh, two or three times a, a, a week, I'll send it to you, okay? All right, this is the Kingdom Cultural Center. In other words, what we do here is we present you the kingdom and the culture of the kingdom, 
not religion. We don't present Christianity. Christianity is a religion. We present the kingdom. And that you can find out. Now, what do I mean by that? I mean, some of you may be a little confused. So let me break it down to you. When Jesus came out of the wilderness, after being tempted of the devil for 40 days, his first mission was to go and he start preaching the kingdom of God. Now, uh, I want you to understand something. I want to read this to you so you can get a, 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 a grasp on what I'm talking about, okay? Now, I want you to turn to Matthew's, the fourth chapter, and the Matthew 4 and 10, 4 and 17, okay? Just give me a minute here. I'll be right up in you. Okay? Now listen. The reason why a lot of us are going through changes right now is because we go under this banner called Christianity. And it's a religion, just like any other religion. Muhammad. And religion is seeking for God. Now I know a lot of you use that term um, Christianity. Um, but I want you to understand something. You know, uh, uh, that name wasn't given to us uh, it, it, by Jesus or God. It was given to us by people. And all the way back after Christ died in the time of Antioch. Now, I went through this once before, so I want you to understand that. So, when you, when you, when, when you say what Jesus wants you to say and what he did, you come to understand. And when I mean that, when you embrace the concept of the kingdom, you'll understand a lot of the things that you thought you knew. I know sometimes you, you be reading the scripture and you come to read over and over and you may feel bored. Now, I'm going to tell you what happens in the religious world. A lot of churches, what they do, they have a lot of programs when they preach on healing. They have a lot of programs when they preach on financial blessings. Uh, uh, all these programs they have uh, to draw income into their congregation. But Jesus only had one message. Now you turn to Matthew 4 and 4 and 17. When he came out the wilderness, here's what happened. I'm going to start with the 15th verse. Let us read. The land of Zebulun and the land of Nebali by the way of the sea beyond the Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles, the people who sat in darkness have seen a great light. And upon those who sat in the region and shadows of death, light has dawned. Now here's Jesus when he came out the wilderness. From that time on, Jesus began to preach and to say, Repent, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. That's a government. That's not a religion. You know, it's a government, it's not a religion. Now you go into the 23rd verse, you see where he speaks again. And Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues. Let's just say in their, in their churches, but in their synagogues. Preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing all kinds of sickness and all kinds of disease among the people. I want you to know, the, one of the, the clear-cut ways you know it's the kingdom is healing, miraculous stuff happen. Now, in the kingdom, they're not miraculous. It's an everyday occurrence. Healing in the kingdom of God, when you obey the word, it's an everyday occurrence. It's nothing new. It's nothing new. So, I want to get this established first. That it's the kingdom of God that Jesus' message was predicated on. Nothing else. And when the kingdom is around, when the kingdom is present, things happen. Blind eyes open. You see people's lives change when the kingdom of God is present. And that why is it so, that's why it's so important that we embrace the concept because we have to be detoxed for what we've been intox with in order to prosper in the kingdom. I'm going to say that again. We have to be detoxed for what we've been intox with 
from down through the years in order for us to prosper. Until next session, next session uh, uh, I'll see you then.